and, and are, are looking to preach, preach it. But this morning, I just want to introduce what, uh, what we're going to be looking at for the next few months. There's there's a lot that uh, is being said or spoken about the church today. There's a a lot that uh, that's that's being told. The sad thing is, most of it is not biblically sound. It's, it doesn't reflect the mind of God and. And uh, my desire is that uh, to look at the church and and the plan that God has for it, the church that 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 we are, the church that that God desires for us. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to go into the Word of God and identify the things that are essential and most notable uh, to the very life of the church. We've already really started these things. We started them back in September. Uh, we preached on, on uh, uh, being spirit-filled. And uh, all the way up through November and December. And uh, we, we've seen a lot of this, this that I'm talking about. But I want to bring it to some kind of uh, more basic also, we're talking about faith, love, humility, unity, forgiveness, uh, joy, contentment, those things of the church, these kind of attitudes that characterize the church and also supply the energy that the church has. Today I want to look at, just for a few moments, an, an attitude, if, it, if I had to give it to you in one word, it would be strength. Strength. Some may call it fortitude. Some may call it courage. But I believe for the sake of what we're going to be doing for the sex, next few months, I want it to be called being strong. Or the strength of the church. Considering the, the, the human body, strength is of utmost importance. It's very important that the body be able to function at its max potential. It has to have a, a measure of strength. All of us realize this because... If, we're, if we wake up in the morning and we feel sick, we, we're not able to get done the things that we need to do in our bodies. And we take many avenues to make sure that this happens in our life. We have a medical standpoint by which we all take and, and make sure that medically we're, we, we, we take care of ourselves. We have our yearly checkups, and then when we're sick, we go to the doctor, and, and uh, if we need surgery, we get it done. And then there's the, the exercise platform by which we all do our water aerobics, amen? Don't we, don't we say this? We do water aerobics, we do our, our, our exercises, we go to the gym, we work out, to, to help us to be and to have more strength. And then also we watch our dietary platform. Got to cut out them carbs and, and we can't eat too much protein. And we, we've got to, uh, you know, we've got to stay on a diet. That our bodies stay strong. That we don't, that we don't overdo it in our become those that have diabetes, high cholesterol. So there's a lot that, that, that taken to, make, uh, to maintain and to, to strengthen our bodies and to maintain that strength. 
Well, the same thing is true in the church or the life of the church. The same thing is true in the life of the church. It needs to be eternally strengthened. If the church is going to function the way God wants it to function, it has to be strong. It has to be strong. And when we're talking about the strength of the church, we're talking about courage. We're talking about courage and conviction. Talking about standing firm. Uncompromising. Someone who is not weak. Is not vacillating or are defeated. Who is not afraid or fearful. Someone who has courage and boldness. Who can comfort and confront and stand up even in the midst of persecution and an intimidation. And yet be true to that which is right. We're talking about someone who doesn't give way to fear very easy. Somebody who doesn't seek the easy path of life. Someone who is looking not for a safe place. Somebody who lives on principle. We're talking about having courage in doing what is right and true. Having conviction and not willing to set aside those convictions because of situations. Someone who's strong against opposition. Someone brave enough to face challenges. And that's the virtue greatly needed in the church today. We're living in a time of, of great compromise. Doesn't matter where you look or... or it's almost like I, I heard this morning the, the true church is being swallowed up with, by the false church. There's weakness everywhere. Compromise has become something by which people believe that compromising is a form of strength. But today we need real strength in the church. We're not talking about strength of personality. Although the, we really like that virtue in a person. Someone who is strong, has that strong personality is someone that we're attracted to. Someone who has conviction and is willing to live by those convictions. It, it draws us to them. There's just something about a person who, who lives according to what he believes that gives them stamina and draws people to them. And those who see the importance of, of virtue. Those who see the, necess the, the necessity of, of consistency as importance in their life. In a word, you could say integrity. It's a wonderful word, and what it really means is this right here. When all parts are perfectly integrated, that's integrity. And certainly in the spiritual realm, it, it is beyond a preference, it is a mandate. We need strong churches. We need strength in our churches. And we live in a time when, when, um, when weakness is, is applauded. Compromise is applauded. Acceptance is applauded. This is a time 
of weakness that we live in. A time of compromise. It is a time of let's not offend. Let's not make waves by holding strong doctrine and conviction. Perhaps there's never been a more desperate need for strength than right now. This is not a time for weak men in weak pulpits preaching weak messages to weak people. This is a time that we need strength. I would like to ask you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter number 16 and verse number 13. And as you're finding your place there, I want to sort of give you an understanding of some of the things the Bible says about strength. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 4, verse number 20, that Abraham was strong in faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, and verse number 34, it says those hero, he, he, heroes of faith in weakness became strong. Paul said that God's strength is made perfect in His weakness. In Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 10, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. The Bible has a lot to say about being strong. But there's a statement here in Corinthians chapter number 16 in verse number 13 and 14. I want to read it to you. It says, Watch ye steadfast, uh, stand fast in the faith. Quick you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. I want to pause right there just a moment and let's pray. Father, I do thank you for this time. And Lord, I pray that you would bless your word. Lord, I do humble myself before you, realizing I'm just a man in need of you. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us for truly in this day that we live in. We need to be a strong church. Lord, not a church of a vast number, but a, a church of strength. A church that stands by the word. A church that, that stays by the stuff. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would have your will as we look into this in the weeks to come. And today, Lord, that you'd have your will in our lives. I love you and thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Many times we think that if we have strength, then we... Forfeit love. But this verse here tells us that we're to be strong and not forfeit love. That even though we're to act like men or to, to quicken ourselves like men, that we're to have charity. This verb here that is used in this this uh, context here this Greek verb means to conduct yourselves in an encouragement or in a courageous way it is the only place in the New Testament where this verb is used so we have not uh, a place in the New Testament that we can compare get a little help and to understand what it means to conduct oneself in a courageous way. But may I suggest that, that the reason it is used here to say quicken you like men is basically because in the ancient times, men was synonymous with courage. Life had a lot more risk in Paul's time that he lived as 
it has today. It had a lot more risk in the, in the Old Testament times. If you ask yourself, how did men act? Uh, if uh, we are Christians to being told to be, you know, to, to act like men, to, to fortify ourselves like men, how did they act? In our society, at the, if we might ask the question, what and how do men act? Well, there's all kinds of ways that, <laughs> that that could be answered. Men today are feminine. And then they are brazen also. Bullies. Harmful. Harmful. And everywhere in between those two, there is the acting of men. But there was a time in this world when, when there was uh, still a place where the world, where men, the, the word man was synonymous with courageous or courage and strength. But it isn't today. There was a time, as you might well know, that uh, men had to carve out their lives in great difficulty in, in, in diverse uh, uh, environments. It meant building with your hands. It meant cleaning and plowing and, and uh, producing your, and protecting your family in troubled areas, troubled surroundings. When war would be there amongst them. There was a time in this, this world when, the, when uh, you defended your property. You defended your life. You defended your family. And it was all done by your hands. It was mortal combat. And you carved out your existence with body strength, sweat, resistance, work, hard work. And you poured out your energy. I mean, you just have to read the, the Old Testament and you, you see the difficulty in the environment that they lived in and, and, and the, the difficult things that they had to go through and endure and the diseases and plagues and wars and, and the attacks and the assaults and, and, and the, the diverse labors that they had to do. It was a time when men were men, so to say. It meant being strong and bending their backs and moving with their muscles. Not in your local gym to exercise, to be able to pull your shirt off so someone could see your abs. But it was to make a life, to protect a family, to provide for your children. Far more serious issue were at hand. We live in a time today where the closest men come to this kind of irritation is, is maintaining their emotional con uh, uh, composure on I-85 during rush hour traffic. Our Throwing their something at the TV because they're the person that uh, they really want to see win the football game is losing. We have sort of a sort of redefined the role of men in our society and what it is used for. The New Testament gives us no illustration of this verb and what it means, but the Old Testament gives us many illustrations. 
And just for a moment, I want to go back and look in Deuteronomy chapter number 31. If you'll remember that as we come to the end of Deuteronomy, the children of Israel already received instruction from the Lord. They've already built a tabernacle. They've already got all the, all the worship down pat. And they, 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 they've, they've, uh, they've been split up into groups and, and, uh, and divisions. And, and they're, they're getting ready to cross over. They're getting ready to cross over. In Deuteronomy chapter number 31, Moses obviously is at the particular point of his life he is going to pass away. He's going to pass off the scene. And the mantle of the leadership is going to be taken up by Joseph, uh, 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 Joshua. And Joshua will lead the people into the promised land. And in the 31st chapter of Deuteronomy, the instruction comes from the Lord. Comes to the people of the... And particularly to Joshua. It says that you shouldn't be concerned about your enemies. The Lord tells them in verse number 3, It is the Lord your God who is going to cross before you. You, you don't need to worry. It's what Moses is saying. God is going to go with you. He's going to be there. So in verse number 6, he says, be strong and of good courage. There's that same two verbs. Those same two Greek words that are given in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Indicating the same strength needed. The same encouragement that is needed. Not to fear. Fear is always the negative side of strength. Do not fear or tremble. Why are we not to do that? Why is that not possible? Uh, why are we not to be fearful? Well, it's simple because the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. He goes before us. I don't know what, to, uh, what uh, 2024 holds. But I can tell you this right here, that the Lord has already gone before us. He will not fail us nor forsake us. That was the words of Moses to the people of Israel to be strong, to be courageous. And then the words of Moses to Joshua in verse number 7. Moses calls Joshua. Listen to what it says. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all the, of Israel, Be strong and of good courage. The same two words. Listen to what else he says. He says, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has swore unto their father to give them, and thou hast caused them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, nor uh, uh, Forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Here then is God telling the people, be strong and of good courage. Here's Moses telling Joshua, be strong and be of good courage. And Joshua 
chapter number 1. Obviously, the mantle is, of leadership is falling to Joshua, and he is going to take uh, them across into the land, and God uh, has a promise to give him. God promises him. He said he's going to be with him. He tells him that the servant, his servant Moses has died. But I'm going to be with you and lead the people. And in Joshua 1, 5, he says this right here. There shall not a man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. He tells him to have strength to be of good courage. And he says, there's none going to be able to withstand you. Can I tell you that same encouragement, those same encouraging words are given to us that we're to equip ourselves like men. Be courageous. Be strong. As I was with Moses, I, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. In verse number 6, he says it again, Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou deliver from the, for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Again, we have those same words that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. In other words, the idea of being strong and, and, and courageous means to live the, courage, uh, the courage of your conviction which is found upon the, the Word of God. That is what he's telling them. That's why he says in verse number 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart out of, my mouth, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. I have commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Tremendous exhortation is given. Courageous and courage means that we do not compromise on the Word of God. That the values that are laid up in the Word of God are that by what governs our lives. And can I tell you, in that we'll find good success. And that is where our courage and our strength comes from. Can I tell you that is what is needed in the church today? This is what we need to be courageous in the Word. That the Word of God be that that strengthens us within and, and gives us a strength by which we're not afraid. Of what man may do. I wish I could say that this is, this is all that we need. But, but there is more that we need to explore. If you can turn real quickly with me to Ephesians chapter number 3. And I want you to realize something here. I'm not here to pep you up. I'm not, try, I'm not trying to get you excited in emotion or, 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 or jack your emotions up so, so, so you, you'll remember in your mind that you need to be encouraged, you need to be strong. I, that's not what I want us to do. But what I want us to do is see the fulfillment that's needed of strength in our lives today. In Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse number 14, it says this right here. It says, For this cause I bow, Paul is found praying. And he says this right here, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole world in heaven and in earth is named. 
that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by the spirit in the inner man. I just want to add this. That while we're called to be strong and we're called to be of courage and it's commanded to us and it's a mandate for us to be that. To ex- be exhorted. That this can only happen through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. It's not something that we can, that we can conjure up or pep ourselves up or, or motivate ourselves into. We're talking about being filled and controlled by the Spirit of God. Walking in the energy and the power of the Spirit. Being committed to a consistent living of the life of the values of the Word of God. This is being strong. This is what is meant So there's three things that I covered and I'm going to cover them real quick and we're going to close. Number one, if we're going to be strong, we're going to have to know the Word of God. There's no way that we can live by the value or or the, the, the principles of the Word of God or the values of the Word of God except we know the Word of God. We are to uh, commit ourselves And being strong this year for the Lord to know what the Word of God says. Can I tell you, it's not going to happen on Sunday. It's not going to happen on Wednesday night. Listen, this is something that we do for God on our own, in our households, when we're by ourselves, we get to know the Word of God. If your only word of God you're getting is Sunday and Wednesday, can I tell you, you are malnutritious. We must know the word of God. Second is we must commit our li- uh, ourselves to living for truth. There has to be some integrity in our lives. That we don't just say we're Christians, we live as we're Christians. We don't just say we go to church, but what we do by our life prove that we are the church. There must be that integrity, that commitment to life, to those things that are truth. And then thirdly, we must Cast ourselves on the energy that by which the Holy Spirit gives us to walk with Him. Not in our own strength. It's not in our strength that we can do anything. But only by God. And God has given us the Spirit of God that dwells inside of us that we can walk the way He desires. And if we do not commit ourselves to live and and be subjective to the Holy Spirit, can I tell you what we're going to end up doing? We're going to end up being contrary to what the Word of God says. Can I tell you, when I set out every morning and I go do something, I, I, I have not in my mind that I'm going to go and do, be a bad testimony. When I go to do something, I, set, I have a purpose in my mind that, Lord, it doesn't matter what comes in my path, I'm going to be what you want me to be. That means if, if, the, if, if someone cuts me off, I'm going to yield to him and say, bless you. If I go to the grocery store and and you know what? They don't have my favorite milk there. Then I go over to the sugar aisle and they ain't got no sugar either. And I go to the butter aisle and the only three things I come for was milk, sugar, and butter. And they ain't got none of those things. 
And here comes the manager. And boy, you know what? First thing he's going to get is, you know what? I come to this store because it's closest to my house. And every time I come here, there ain't nothing here. Y'all don't do that, do you? Only I do that. But when I purpose in my heart that it ain't going to be there, I'm going to say, Lord, you know, I come here for this purpose, but maybe you have some other purpose for me here. And you think I'm being all spiritual, don't you? But I go by the markdown section and see if I got anything there that I needed. No, I'm just kidding with you. Now, maybe you need to tell somebody about the Lord. It's having a purpose and purpose in our heart that the Word of God is going to dwell inside of me and that I'm going to be committed to His truth and I'm going to walk in the Spirit of God. That's what our church needs. As much as I'd like to see these pews filled, I would be more satisfied with each and every one of us living this way in our daily lives and never ever grow a single person. It is just as much needful. My desire this year is to see our church go strong. Not in the strength of numbers, but in the strength of the Lord. And I hope that it is yours too. Let's stand together. Father, I thank you so much for your word. No, oh, Lord God, I pray. I pray you'll help us as we continue to look at this thought as in the days to come. Lord, that it would not just be a, a word, but it would become a lifestyle to us to be strong in the Lord by the power of your might. Help us, Lord, I pray. Help us to walk in this. And Lord, we'll praise you for what you accomplish. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Jeff, what we're going to sing? Sing, Just As I Am. Number two is family. All Amen. right. You're dismissed. Amen.